Welcome back to uh, yet another episode of Over the Skype. Um, as uh, our most loyal viewers have uh, noticed, we have done a lot of these during the Corona crisis time because we couldn't travel. And now we have uh, uh, we have not so many uh, Over the Skype episodes uh, right now. And and uh, and uh, but that doesn't mean that it's not a pleasure because today I'm going to talk to uh, Francois Martin. Uh, who works for Bobst, and um, one of the reasons I'm particularly happy about this interview is because uh, uh, you are going to introduce a new strategy, isn't that right, Francois? Yes, that's correct, uh, Morten. So we are now launching uh, our new vision for the packaging industry, and um, it's going to be strategic for Bobst, and this is going to help us to pave the way for the next five years at least, and uh, I'm glad to, to be able to discuss that with you. Before we talk about uh, the strategy, because I, I have uh, obviously seen some of uh, the PowerPoints and some of the notes that you have sent to me, so I have, uh, I have studied a little bit on But before we talk about that, can you talk a little bit about how is the uh, situation in, in, uh, in Switzerland and with Bobst uh, today, uh, June the 3rd, I think it is, or the 4th? <laughs> So the, the, the situation, I mean, for, for Bobst, it's uh, the outcome of the situation of the world because Bobst is a global player. We have machines all over the world. As you can imagine, there are packages in all kinds of countries from Pakistan to Chile to North America to Australia. So the situation is, um, it's not great, but it is not so bad either. We are lucky at Bob's to be in packaging mm. because packaging as such, it follows the development of the global population. Mm. So typically the main indicator is the GDP growth. If GDP is up, packaging goes up. If GDP is down, packaging goes down. And then within packaging, pharma industry and food has been very much protected. In fact, in the pharma business, we saw some acceleration in production, but overall, the packaging production has declined a little bit, specifically automotive industry, uh, hotels, uh, airlines that are consuming uh, packages. It's not happening. So our clients, some of them are printing less, are producing less than they were supposed to produce. Um, and then we had obvious difficulties to install new machines because uh, agents could not uh, take the plane. So 2020 uh, will not be a year with growth. At the same time, uh, the decline is, is moderate. And then now we are looking at 2021, 2022, uh, and to understand what would be the consequences of, of the situation. Mm -hmm. And we took care of all the employees. Some of them were remote. We had to close factories in uh, France, in Italy, in Germany, uh, in, uh, um, in China, in uh, India, and so on. So we, we took the, all the measures that were supposed to, to be taken. And now we are back to a regular, uh, let's say, operating model. The only thing that is still hurting us is the lack of traveling yeah. for the service engineers and uh, so we, we put um, a program in place to ensure we are shipping spare parts to all the clients uh, to maintain what uh, the, the production mm -hmm. uh, at the maximum for the clients. And we hope that the situation will get better. So mm -hmm. in Switzerland, uh, uh, we are just a tiny country. The factory was closed uh, for a few, few weeks, and now it's back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, however, we expect a slowdown in... Uh, Demand, yeah. demand for on your machine. The re the reason I was asking was uh, for two reasons. Uh, because um, of course I'm always uh, interested to from a human's perspective how you're doing and and how people are are, are you know surviving in this crisis. Because I think that this uh, uh, this has been a quite a wake up call for a lot of people and politicians in in this time. And the second reason why I was asking was also because uh, since we're going to talk about your a strategy in a moment. Um, I think that uh, to have a strategy for a company the size of Bob's is not something that you just do overnight. Uh, so, how much has the the 
the COVID-19 and, and uh, all the challenges in the market that we see now, how much has that influenced the, the last day's preparation of your, of your strategy? So you, you said it nicely. In fact, we had already directions for the strategy. And what the COVID-19 has done, it has accelerated a lot of decisions. And that's the way I would summarize it. What we are going to announce on the 9th of June, it was supposed to be announced at Drupa. Mm. Okay, we don't go to Drupa, fine. We announce it through other channels uh, and it will work. Um, but what we have, uh, what we are going to announce, it was in the tube. Few things have changed. It is that we have accelerated some other decisions um, because of the corona situation, but also because of the global uh, climate change that is becoming very obvious. Uh, and because of all the responsibilities we have to shape a better world for the next generation. So mm -hmm. at BOPST, it's very important to, to not look at the next quarter or the next year in terms of business. It's a family owned business and, and they want to be around for the next generation. Yes. And it means that we need to build a more sustainable packaging production. Mm -hmm. that, that's the key objective. We, we, we are going to talk about that also uh, uh, shortly. Um, I was thinking that uh, uh, some of the guests I have been talking to in, in, this, in this form with all the Skype, uh, we have been talking about what happens after with the market after the Corona crisis, because I think it's already now becoming evident that a lot of changes in the market will happen, like uh, uh, some people are predicting that maybe the, uh, uh, the, the development in digital uh, will, will be faster. Uh, I, I, I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, I think uh, one of the best suggestions came from uh, our English Brazil, uh, Hamilton Costa, because he suggested that it's maybe not so much due to the corona, but maybe more because the corona initiates the recession that everybody's been talking about for such a long time. And in uh, as everybody knows, that in all recession times, uh, that that fuels new technology, it fuels new ideas, it fuels new ways of doing business. How, how what is your view on on the afterlife in in the, from the corona? So we were really looking at. We are just going to talk about packaging production. So what the corona is making uh, obvious, it is that the production has to be more agile. So all the brand owners that are ordering packaging and then all the converters that are producing what brand owners are asking, these, these two, they, they need to, to produce packaging uh, in a more agile way. It means they need to reduce the amount of stocks they have. They need to, to change production when you have unexpected uh, changes like the corona. So they are all looking at how can I do my production in a more agile way. They still need to deliver quality because this is not something that people want to make a trade-off on. Um, they need to ensure uh, proper cost control because prices uh, can't go up. I mean, no one is willing to pay more for any um, type of packaging. Yeah. Hardly, yes. And and then they all understand that plastic overall has to change. Uh, the way we produce uh, flexible packaging has to evolve to, to be more sustainable, specifically the recycling. So now with the... And to do that, they all understand that the way things have been done the last 30 years, it was working, no debate, but it was the operation, it was in silos. It was um, everyone, the brand owners, the designers, the pre-press, the workflow, the, the printing, the converting, the retailers, uh, the distributors, and, and the packers and the consumers, all that chain was operating in silos. Mm. And what people realize is specifically with the corona where you can't travel face to face things need to be connected so the main point people want they want to connect they want to ensure that a decision made by uh, mr a mm. impacting uh, mr c in the line that the information flow will be will be agile so connectivity is going to be important and then they want to digitalize the process mm. because we are living in a digital world like the two of us we, we talk uh, 
with a digital camera, a digital network, everything is digital. Yeah. In fact, between the two, the two of us, we have just zeros and one, nothing else. Yeah, you're the one so, and the zero. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's the, exactly the, the, the challenge that we need to connect people, we need to connect machines, we need to digitalize the process, and once that is done, then we need to automate as much as possible. And to automate, it means removing human errors. Uh, and, and then we need to, to do all of these with sustainability in mind. Mm. And, and that sounds fairly simple, but this is going to be the foundation of, of the strategy of BOPST. Mm. Can, and, I just, uh, can I just ask you a question? Uh, because um, uh, when you announced that you were not uh, participating at Drupal 21 and... and uh, also announced that it was from an environmental perspective because I think that somebody's even tried to calculate the the carbon footprint of uh, all the people going to to Düsseldorf. Does that mean that also when you look at uh, uh, Bob's commitment in your new strategy, it's not just uh, the travel thing; it's also like how to improve uh, all the processes to minimize waste and to make sure that uh, everybody in the value chain is sharing data uh, through your connectivity so you get what you need at the right time and nothing more, nothing less? Yes, so sustainability, it, it is encompassing a lot of elements. And then Drupa is one of them. We are all, we could also talk about Label Expo, all these industry trade shows, they, they were good. Nothing against these trade shows as such. But if we are looking at the footprint of such events, and then if we are looking at the challenges we have ahead for the next generation, because the global warming is not a joke. I mean, if you are living in Switzerland, you see the Gletscher uh, smelting big time. And uh, in, in in the month of May, it is as hot in, as it was in the month of August. Mm. So th that's really a lot of changes that you don't need to be a genius to see that we have big changes ahead. Mm. So we are looking at sustainability in the way we are designing the machines, in the way we are building the machines, in the way the, the, the machines are consuming less energy, in also the way we are printing and converting thinner substrate, less waste, more digital when it is possible. Um, so the sustainability uh, program as such, it's, it's a big one. Mm. And we are making slices of the elephant to be able to, to to approach each of the steps carefully. So not going to trade shows, it was not an easy decision uh, because Bob's was going to Drupa since 1951, no stop. And now we are, we looked at the, the environmental footprint, going to trade shows, shipping hundreds of tons of equipment. Mm. And then you ask yourself, is it really necessary? And if the answer is, it is just nice to have, then you ask yourself, in, in these challenging times, mm -hmm. is it really a responsible to do that? Is it really, do you really have to do it? Mm -hmm. And then we came to the conclusion that it's nice to have, not a must. It's clear that we it would be great if we could be there, but we can't be there without a major environmental impact. Mm -hmm. And then we took the decision that for 2021, it's more complex because all the news that we are revealing in already 2020, in the market, right? they are already out. So what do we say in 2021? Yeah. And then Drupa 2024 was announced. Mm. Then it means that you have a three years cycle. And at the last Drupa, we all said, no, it does not make sense to go to three years. Yeah. That was the idea of Drupa in 2019. And then the traveling of the customers, a lot of our customers, they are facing uh, financial pressure. And we are not sure that all of them will be willing to go to Drupa. They don't know if hotels will be open, if yes, will breakfast be served, what kind of distancing are we going to have, and transportation, and these are so many unknowns. And for Drupa, it's not easy because they don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. So they are like us waiting and um, so we believe that we need to to make some decisions from time to time that are not going to be popular necessary but if they make sense for the society mm. and they are not preventing us 
from having a good customer relationship, yeah, of course. then we should do it. Yeah. I have to turn back to a question that I'm pretty sure that at least some maybe from outside the industry would, would ask. Since you have the concern about uh, the environmental uh, impact on, on a lot of things, and I appreciate, of course, that you are uh, investing in, in making your machines more efficient, energy efficient, and things like that. But don't you think that, you know, when you have a statement where you want to be the environmentally friendly decisions that you make as part of your strategy, uh, don't you think that some people may think that, but you're doing, you're doing packaging, and packaging is... Of course, a necessity in the sense that you deliver goods, but is packaging not considered by many as mostly waste? So, yes, I know. We have also that kind of discussion with my kids at home. Uh, they are quite old. Uh, but packaging, if you look at packaging, it is protecting the goods. And then it is perceived as waste. But if you are not packaging the goods, the goods would be damaged. Mm. And that would be even worse. And then if you look at packaging, you have three, you have different types of packages. You have everything that is paper-based, so folding carton and corrugated. This is paper-based, so it can be recycled, recycled, recycled. And on that one, really, I'm not worried, because even these sheets of paper, you can re reproduce them, um, and they are not really polluting the planet uh, at all. What is really the, then you have labels. Labels, it's mainly paper, all kind of substrates, in fact, little bit of uh, plastic, shrink sleeves, and then flexible packaging is the big deal. Mm -hmm. So in flexible packaging, this is where the entire industry, not only Bost, we all need to work together to make packaging like paper, mm -hmm. something you can recycle. Mm -hmm. And today, this is not the case. Today, the recycling of flexible packaging is not happening. So you produce flexible packaging, it's protecting the goods very effectively, and then it becomes um, energy because you have to burn it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, the, that, that's the current chain. Yeah, and yeah. What, we are, what we believe is that we need to change the way flexible packaging is made so that it becomes recyclable, like the PET of the plastic bottles. Yeah. But to say that packaging is waste, if you are abusing the packaging, yes, it's becoming waste, but this is not a, it's not a decision of Bob's, it's really a decision of the brand owners. Mm. And some of them are doing a better job than others. Sometimes it is overpacked, or the packaging is too costly or too, too, too much. Mm. That's true, but this is not Bob's to no 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 to no, change that no no no. But we are making education. Yeah, we no, work no. with the brand owners, and we show to them all what can be done. And there are many packages where you can reduce the size, reduce the weight without reducing the protection of the goods. Mm. The reason I was asking is not because I I totally agree with all uh, with all the things you said. I was just wondering. You know, sometimes if you are if you were like a big uh, oil company and you say that you wanted to change <laughs> your uh, products from not being oil but being uh, fracking or <laughs> what, <laughs> that would be like kind of a, a, a strange situation to be in. I was just wondering because you live of packaging and packaging is by some scene. And I was wondering if you as a global company, when you make these decisions about uh, having an environmental policy that is so evident in your in your DNA uh, now. I was also wondering if you were like thinking of how you could help your customers to to uh, utilize, uh, for example, as you said, that you can reduce size of weight, you can reduce consumption of, of board, and you can maybe in the future eliminate the use of plastic 100%. So that was, I was thinking whether the, the strategy also takes that approach, how you can educate your, your customers. Yeah, we, we have to do that, and for us, Unlike other companies, because we are family owned, the CEO can take decisions that are eventually for the next two, three years, not going to be so popular. Mm. And uh, it may eventually impact the stock price down for short term, but on the long term is right. Mm. The things need to go that way. So that mentality of, of looking at, okay, next generation, it is very important mm. because if you're just looking at short-term, 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 then you make uh, stupid decisions. Mm. 
Uh, and uh, Bob's fun. been around for 130 years, and Bob's has really changed the way packaging has been produced, and we would like to continue to do it for, for the next uh, century. Yeah. Francois, um, um, obviously, even Bob's, even you're a big company, and even you have a global presence, you still have competition in the market. The, the, the new strategy and how you both see the sustainability and how you see the connectivity and how you uh, also talk about digitalization and things like this, is that something that uh, obviously you do that because it brings you you brings you forward in, in, in where you believe the market will move and, and, and position yourself as a, as a, as a long-term uh, partner, of course. But do you think that it will be a huge differentiator for you compared to your competitors? So we have competitors, and in fact, competition is healthy because this is pushing us to to think uh, differently, to adjust. So, but when we look at what is unique from Bobst, it is that Bobst is is almost the only company able to coat the substrate, to print, um, to cut, to fold and glue and to laminate and so on. So we have the entire chain for all the industries, for labels, flexible packaging, folding carton, and corrugated. So in that, in that sense, Box is in a pretty good position because it's not about improving only one step in the production chain. You need to make sure that all the, the elements are optimized and working well together. So this is giving us a competitive advantage, but we are also closely looking at what the competition is doing. And then if I look at myself, I spent many, many years at HP. They did great things. They, they invented the digital printing and was part of that industry transformation, and it will continue. So digital printing is going to be part of the landscape. And Bob is also looking at it. Mm. Uh, we have in labels, very competitive offering in digital printing. So you, we need to be aware of uh, the world where we live, and we, we cannot be uh, ignoring the big trends like uh, climate change. We need to look at the competition, and we cannot ignore digital printing and also digital uh, laser cutting and so on. These things are going to, to be part of the new reality yeah. where we are living. Mm. So the, so this is why we are looking at the entire chain. Mm. We are looking at all the bricks that need to be there. And then if, and we will also build our strategy with partners. Mm. We are not going to work silo, mm. to work solo out of Switzerland, the, the little uh, village uh, in the mountains. We are going to work with partners when it is needed. Like in flexible packaging, we are working with uh, Dow Chemicals, BASF, we are working with ESCO and then other names because you can't transform an industry solo. It's all about partnerships mm. because solo, the task is way too big. So partnerships is a um, part of the strategy. Mm. But uh, the reason I was asking was maybe because, you know, say let's say that, let's say that you do, of course, better equipment, you... Uh, put a huge uh, responsibility on being a sustainable company that adds that could add to the cost of a Bob's machine eventually right and then in a competitive situation I was just wondering if 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 you believe that the market is ready to also take on investments that might be a little bit more I don't say it will be expensive I'm just saying that you must have considered that this could be something that that could influencing the pricing right yeah, co correct. So the price, Bob is not known to 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 provide uh, low cost equipment. But at the same time, converters, when they buy equipment, they, they keep it for a very long time. And uh, we have customers that they are using the same machines for the last thirty years, and they are making upgrades whenever it, it's possible. Uh, but so, what is important for the clients? It is not only the acquisition price, the purchasing price. It's also all the costs related to operating the machines. And uh, then we call it total cost of ownership. So the TCO is where Bob's is, is quite good. 
Because of course, the Bob's equipment, when you buy it initially, the capital expense, it's a little bit higher, probably. Mm. But then, once you are using it, then it is going to be lower cost. Mm. And so, the customers decide what they prefer. And uh, what we have seen, it is that people are looking at long-term investments and not something, okay, I buy, I use, I throw it away, and then I start again. At the same time, we have competitors that are offering great solutions and um, it, it will all depend on what you want to do. So Bob's has great solutions, but competitors also, for some of them at least, they have also great solutions. Mm. And uh, if, if I, always make the, I, always, I always make the joke, okay, if you buy a Mercedes, an Audi, a BMW, my friend, buy whatever you want. In the, all cases, you will have a nice car. You are not necessarily going to be a great driver, but whatever you buy is fine. The three of them are great. That's true. So that, that's a little bit the same for, for, for equipment. Yeah. Buy um, what you believe in. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, one of the things I was thinking about, because as you have mentioned a couple of times, uh, the connectivity is, is a very important part of, uh, of uh, your future. How do you see uh, connectivity in... In, in the Bob's value chain, but also in relation to that, I believe that some of the converters and some of the printing companies may have other brands in that, in the, in the, in, the, in those companies. And so can you work together with the other brands as well? Yes, so we have put a connectivity infrastructure that we call Bob's Connect. So Bob's Connect, it, it's a, a cloud-based uh, platform where you can connect all the different equipments from Bobs, and once you connect them together, they will work very well. But that Bobs Connect infrastructure will also connect to other elements uh, from the customers. So, like if, if you are using a Prenect uh, workflow from Heidelberg, or if you are using Esco, or if you are using something from Kiwi in corrugated, and so on, you will be able to data will be able to be exchanged. Mm. So you don't have to be just boxed. So it is an open architecture mm. and um, it will facilitate data exchange with other elements of the value chain. Mm. That, that's what we are designing in connectivity. Mm. One of the things that is, of course, a huge uh, buzzword this year uh, is, of course, uh, Internet of Things or IoT. And, and, and we spoke about this last week that that you obviously take advantage of the IoT as well. Is Are you also planning to use it for scheduled main maintenance and uh, monitoring production so you can enable customers to be more efficient or, or what is your objective with the connectivity? Yes, absolutely. So IoT is part of the strategy and then Box Connect is, um, is going to help us to do preventive maintenance, it's going to help us to, to access to the marketplace, it's going to, to help us monitoring the production, uh, maximizing the, the performance of every single machine. Uh, it's all about data that will be analyzed and then it will help the converters to make fact-based decisions because they will understand exactly what's happening throughout the packaging production workflow, mm. and also within the, the given machines. And support, this is all going to, to be part of Bob's Connect, and you will find more. Uh, if um, customers want to find out more, they can watch the, the Bob's Connect video mm. that we are releasing uh, on June 9th. Mm. Fantastic. Um, see, I said to you we would come back to talk about your strategy, but, but haven't we touched almost every point of your strategy so far? No, well, we have talked about many points. I mean, your, your, your questions are reflecting, in fact, what's going on in the world, mm -hmm. and packaging is not isolated. Um, it is certainly something that not everyone is talking about it, because people don't realize all the benefits they have every day when they buy something, they are surrounded by, when you go in a supermarket, you are surrounded by, by packaging. And then in many, many countries, you are surrounded by boxed packaging. So when you That's touch nice to Kellogg's, know, isn't it? Yeah, you, when you take uh, 
Kellogg's, Kellogg's corn flakes, uh, when you take a box, when you, uh, you buy wine, uh, you incorrigate it, you, you take uh, peanuts in, uh, or olives in a flexible packaging, uh, or you go into a pharmacy and you buy some, some uh, aspirin, uh, then you, it has been all packed uh, at a given moment of time by Bob. Sometimes Bob's is doing the printing and um, the cutting and the folding, gluing, everything. Sometimes we just do the cutting and the folder gluing. Uh, because the printing is done uh, with a uh, classic offset uh, technology that we do not have. Um, and then in labels, when you buy uh, wine labels, I mean, some of them uh, will be uh, printed on the Bob's machine and so on. So in supermarket, this is, uh, for me, it's a bit funny when I go shopping, I am surrounded by all what's coming from the packaging industry. Mm. And, and uh, when you see what it is, and it's big, big, big quantities, every day it's, it's uh, it's new on the shelf. Huh? Yeah, and as you said, uh, Bob's is very much uh, because you have been this uh, this uh, tremendously high focus on on packaging and and, and labels and and in and, and, and the flexo. Uh, um, uh, I was just I was just thinking that it must be uh, interesting times for you because we spoke about one thing is that the COVID nineteen obviously uh, have some influence on the current situation. But I think there's no doubt in the world uh, and in the printing industry that that packaging is is here to stay and it's a growing segment in the market. And with a strong strategy, uh, I believe that Bob's is now trying to capture a, an even larger market share in the future. Is that something that is realistically, or or is it, uh, or is the competition also getting better? So the. The competition is, is certainly also getting better, but what we believe it is that today, in, in some markets, because when we are talking about packaging, we need to realize that labels is very different than flexible packaging, folding carton, and corrugated. And our performance in the different segment is not the same. Mm. And we, we believe that within every segment of the packaging industry, there will be some industry consolidation. Mm. So today, in some segments, you have in bracket too many suppliers, mm. and some of them will consolidate. This is a little bit like the automotive industry at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, you had a lot, a lot of them. Uh, every country had a car maker, or sometimes 10 of them, yeah. uh, even small countries. Uh, and then the, the consolidation in the automotive, the automotive industry has been tremendous. And the same will happen in packaging. Um, in, in labels today, digital printing, just digital printing for labels, you have more than 80 suppliers of machines. 80, 80. Wow. It's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. And um, it's not going to last like that. Some of them will disappear. Some of them will get together. Mm. And then in folding carton, the same. In uh, flexible packaging, you have less players. In corrugated, you, you have also less players, but you still have a lot of them. Mm. So eventually, it will consolidate. And for Bob's, it's an opportunity to, to, to occupy a, a larger space and to really to become the reference for, for the industry. Bob's has made significant invention in the past. Uh, the motto is leading innovation, and we have done that back since 1940. Um, and we continue, and we want to help converters and brand owners to produce what they have to produce uh, seamlessly in an easy way. And this is the time now where we need to continue to do what we did before, good quality, good productivity, good price, but we need to do that more agile and more sustainable. So the two key words in the strategy is agility and sustainability. And to do that, we believe that it's all going to be about connectivity, digitalization, automation. That, that's these three things that will help to achieve the others. Well, thank you very much for a very interesting conversation here. Uh, I wish you all the best with your future strategy. I wish I could be in Switzerland seeing the presentation of, uh, of it in, in, in live, but uh, unfortunately Switzerland... But if you want, we can... But Morton, if you want, we can invite you to the press conference on June 9th, and then you will be uh, listening to it like all the other journalists. 
Well, uh, I don't. Do you think I can travel to Switzerland right now? No, but it's, it's a virtual press it's conference. A, I don't do virtual things unless I have uh, the leadership, and I have the leadership, and I'm talking to you, my friend. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for the time, and and thank you very much for explaining uh, your your visions and ideas, and uh, I appreciate your time, uh, Francois. Uh, and I look forward to see you in real life sometimes. Even though we uh, may not meet at a trade show, where we, I'm sure we will meet somewhere, some somehow, sometime, right? In all the competent centers we have in the world. So this is the primary uh, hook for our customers. This is where we want really to spend time with them, the competent centers. And we will soon call them smart factories. Thank you very much. So see you there in the smart factories, Martin. Sure, thank you. Bye-bye.